Se que de lo bajo, se que de lo bajo, o lo ami o ti de o yo se que le. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Theory Forge Chronicles. I am Phantom X, of course, joined by a legendary neurotoxin, and Sog is here with us as well. And we are passing time um, waiting for the big map and everything that comes with that. But we have a little bit, I guess, to talk about um, since our last show two weeks. First, how are y'all doing? Doing good. Yeah. Pretty good? Yeah. Yeah. No, no real complaints. Not yet. <laughs> well, we'll see where we're at in 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> so so I guess there's been uh, today uh, the, the latest shiny is something that we can kind of talk about a little bit. We're, we're, of course, all still I guess we should. It's been two weeks, so we should talk a little bit about um, the delay that we're in now, because I don't believe we had a chance to talk about that last time. Right. Is that correct? Am I getting my. I think it's been I three th weeks. I'm trying to, to wrap. I'm trying to remember, but this week's been crazy at work. Today was actually the worst day of the five. But um, if I remember correctly, when we last spoke, there was a delay. We were waiting for that Sunday to kind of see what came on Monday, and there was another sort of delay. And since then, probably the right way, and I think what everyone thinks should have been done the first time, it's well, we're not actually going to do dates anymore uh, for for domain and settlement, we're just going to let you know when it's done, um, which is, I think, what a lot of people were really asking for. I think it's a little more more complicated than that. That The big thing is that there are different types of dates and there are different meanings for, for a date. Like, for domain and settlement selection, people got an email that told them to schedule time off work at a specific time or, or whatever, you know, like, you know, be at your computer, be ready because your time is this. And, uh, and that that's important because it's a limited time. It, it's, it's a limited time window and, you know, we spend a lot of money to be able to do something in that time window, you know, if you're in the higher end of the of the pick list, right? And if you're not there, uh, you you lose some of the val the perceived value of your investment. So it's with domain and settlement selection specifically by pushing it back, it it's messing with people's real lives, right? Where it, talking about know when alpha one starts and it's this long period of time you know it's not that big of a deal you know you, you can push that back you can some things are more flexible but this is a you need to do something at this time so when we know what time that is it just has to be the time and the reaction to all of it, in this case, appears to be getting everything 100% ready, doing as much testing as they can, getting the page up live so that everybody can look at it and maybe even provide a little bit of feedback and giving the monarchs time to really dig through it before choosing their duchy and county and their capital city and all of that before then sending an email to everyone else about when their pick time will be and starting the timer after that. Uh, and I think that's a, that's a good way to do it. But the impression I got from listening in on the in Discord with, you know, Adam was doing a lot of talking and Nim was a strong contributor and 
um, Caspian in there uh, was that not as much like we don't want dates, but you know, let us be involved as it's going forward. Like we're in, in this case, you know, got to be real careful about dates because of what it is specifically. And this is an important kind of date that can't be it can't be changed. But for other things, it's it felt more like a you know keep us involved, keep us up to date. We'll understand and. And then when it's ready, say it's ready, and then have a release party or something, and, and things like that. Uh, and I think that since then, we've seen a lot more interactivity in Discord from Snipe Hunter specifically of really just actually sharing what's going on and what they're working on during that day. And... I think that that satisfies a lot of the problem. It's like we went from after last year at about this time, you know, things kind of crashed like, you know, no, we're not doing alpha and we're not even going to talk to you guys uh, for a while um, because you're not ready for it. And now it's more of a, a now I think it just, Already since then, I think it feels better. Like it, the little bit of interaction on a daily basis, the pe hearing that people are actually working on things without stressing about a specific date and a sp and a and a timeline. Right? It's weird that user potential product users stress about timelines and like. It matters, but if you can just get a community feel like feeling like they're building something together and feeling like they're valued as part of the process, then right now counts. It's uh, because you're not always caring about tomorrow. You're not always thinking, well, I don't need to be putting any effort into caring about this until... You know, June 1st, because June 1st is the day that matters. No, I can I can hang out. I can talk. I can listen. Uh, you know, it actually feels like checking Discord is valuable now. Um, so I think there was some positive outcome there already. Yeah, and that... that but, <clears throat> That probably Sorry, I did a lot of talking already. Oh, no. Hey, <laughs> you know, that probably seemed to first that positivity, um, you know, because the, the, the initial response is we're going to set a new date. And then it was sort of, no, quit doing that. We, you know, you, you keep missing dates. And then almost immediately it was, okay, we're, we're going to take that back. We're going to listen. We're not going to give you dates. So it was almost an immediate, okay, we're actually going to listen or at least you know, it's the appearance of here, you know, we're, we're listening to you guys and you, know, you do matter. Well, there was an actual conversation. It was actually listening to, to voice and, um, uh, acceptance of, you know, you know, hearing Caspian say things like, Hey, you know what? We probably should have listened to you guys more because I dropped the ball on this. Like, like it, it felt good uh, hearing people actually learning and, and listening and accepting feedback and apparently taking it, uh, 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 taking it to heart. Like it, it felt real good uh, after the, the yelling part. <laughs> Nero, anything? Yeah, I mean, this kind of goes back to what I was saying a little bit about the, um, uh, at least with the kind of daily, like, this is what we're working on. Going back to the idea of just giving patch notes or just giving a little bit of detail of what's being worked on. Not necessarily, you know, find, de find details of minutia, but... Uh, just little tidbits like that is definitely something to uh, 
kind of keep people's interest and give people something to talk about rather than uh, not saying anything and people just completely speculating or wondering if the project's still even being made or, you know, whatever, you know, people kind of get into a funny place when there isn't communication about stuff as regularly. So um, I think also the, um, the decision to not continue pursuing the insanity of all day, every day until the job gets done and actually taking a step back and, you know, trying to take a little more relaxed approach is actually going to end up giving us a better product in the end because I don't really think that folks who have been working long hours without a lot of sleep are really going to be that effective. And I would imagine there's just as much um, progress lost in bugs and issues and oversight as there is um, progress made in putting in all the extra time. So, you know, better for the team's health to take it this way. And yeah, you know, the dates were, um, the dates were a good idea if everything was able to be executed, but it's not able to be executed by the date. And, you know, all of the, all of the betting pools and stuff, people got their payouts and stuff. Um, <laughs> yes. You know, it was it was kind of expected to, by and large, that some sort of delay or mistake was going to happen. But uh, it's really better that they're you know taking their time with it. And again, for the part where taking time out of people's lives comes into it to make sure they get the right time slot, that um, that definitely is something that needs to be respected, though. I personally, you know, thinking about it a little bit while we've been talking about it, I oppose doing it that way entirely. There's no reason why you can't just give your your top 20 choices for places that you want to go. And, um, you know, every day or every period of time, it keeps resorting based on who actually has influence and what they've chosen. And if the if your top choice gets bumped, well, hey, you've got like the second choice waiting. The second choice gets bumped. Hey, you know, you don't have to touch it again until 20 people have picked things that you already picked and you're that far down that you don't get to finally lock in a place. So, it, you know, that would be more my uh, solution. That way people don't have to take time out of their lives. You've basically just set a queue. It could be 20. It could be 10. It could be as many as the person is willing to set a priority on. Um, but I feel like that would be a much better way to do it than trying to do the, you know, huge time slot, jump in, do it, go, go, go. Because that's just prone to failure in so many ways. What if the connection has an issue? What if the website's having an issue? What if there's, uh, uh, as we've seen a bunch of times, the um, uh, DOS attack going on during that process so people can't even connect to begin with? It, it just it has so many errors trying to do it as a live sort of thing. And I feel like doing it as something where people queue up where their priorities are is going to work a lot better. So, you know, I don't know how close they are to actually releasing it and getting it out there. But if there's time to modify and to uh, in the in the interest of, you know, really not wasting people's time and letting people uh, not have to take off work or whatever to try to get the spots they can get. I feel like that would be the best way to do it. Again, every maybe 15 minutes, you can still have it update based on, you know, the next person down the line, their place gets locked in and then that updates on the map. And so it could still have a very live element to it. That's still exciting. It's just not like people sitting there and manning it while, while the thing's going on. Yeah, that would make sense. I mean, I, that similar to the, I mean, essentially what you're saying is similar to map voting, right? You, you, you get to rank, things fall into a rank. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very passive though. So I, for me, it's, um, I'm, I'm not, um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not so, I'm not one to take work, take off. Well, I couldn't take off work anyways, but um, for this, so. But but I'm very passive in regards to all this. But it is a little different. Just when, obviously, when so much money has already changed hands, I think there's two two main things people probably want to to have out of this. One is that the feeling like they are being heard, and two is just to have a little bit of an idea of where their money investment. I guess you could call it an investment, but it's not really. But where where it's what what is being done with it. Um, and now everyone's getting that. And we talked about the last show that while everyone was upset, 
really all you know all Soulbound had to do is start releasing some some interesting little information and it would make people everyone you know a lot of their core happy again and that's sort of what's happened so but that, that probably speaks a lot to just the core they developed the people that are there and and just you know how invested they are in this you know it, it would probably take a live video of them burning down the studio saying we are done for for, for, for the real hardcore people to actually give up um, which is but good. I think there's more there's more to it with domain and settlement selection where the process itself is like the coolest thing that's happened in MMOs in decades like it's it's the opportunity that no one has ever had. It's the opportunity that excited so many people at the start. It's the it's that first feeling of being able to touch that world that, it, you know, in a different way to just like walking around in it, uh, like, and it creates this different level of anticipation than, you know. Oh, you'll be able to play a game on Tuesday. No, this is like, this is a hype worthy event. And the way that it was initially pushed, the dates were pushed out and the delays were coming. How are you, you're rushing this out and you're not ready. Like this needs to be ready a week ahead of time and a whole song and dance and show and performance put on about it. Like I, because I think it's that cool. I I think it's that cool that you should be able to, or Soulbound should be able to have a a party, you know, a, a long live stream where they're there and maybe and even monarchs and dukes are calling in and doing their picks over the phone while we're all looking at the UI and like. This kind, this is, it's that kind of event. Like, it's that cool. And to have it feel like it was rushed and have it feel like we don't even, we're not done and it's not on time, like, that's not the level of care that something this awesome needs. And I hope that we can, uh, we can get a little bit more out of it with this, uh, with the, a significant delay. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't watch Game of Thrones because uh, I'm not interested in uh, fan and after, fiction. After <laughs> after this show, I would like to announce Sog will no longer be joining us. <laughs> so. <laughs> we have anyways so I um, got a moment <laughs> the um uh that video though anyway go with yeah, you well, no I was gonna say actually that, that kind of brings us to I guess what they have been doing so there was a video um and then the newest one of sort of explaining or showing just how complex things can actually get um, definitely two things worth talking about. So you can, I guess you want to mention the video, go ahead and we can start with that. Yeah, that, that video is definitely something for folks to get excited about. And, uh, one, one of the things in particular that I noticed, I mean, draw distance is something that's always hard to work out. You do see, if you look at the beginning, a little bit in the horizon, some of the mountains snap in, whatever, they'll fix that, they'll work on it. It's, you know, level of detail and meshes and stuff, they'll figure it out. The, even in what we're seeing is like the, the pre state or whatever with the cell shady and the, you know, not final versions of stuff. Holy hell, that looks so good. I would just play it right now as a single player game. I don't even care. I would just like, I want to explore that world <laughs> right now. That looks great. Knowing that every single plant in that environment is interactable, that every stretch of it, I can, you know, mend the soil and start growing trees and stuff. That's awesome. Like, that's super cool. And then you get later into it and you see the environmental effect that uh, the dust storm coming in. 
that's great. I saw a lot of folks in the comments talking about how like it it was very much realistic to them. Uh, one person was saying it uh, reminded them of when they were in the Middle East and dust storm of similar size and proportion would come over. Like that's that's really awesome to have uh, an environmental weather effect that's that meaningful in a game because I can't really think of in really any MMO I've played a weather effect actually having that much of a significant impact on gameplay. Uh, that's that's really just awesome to me. So I mean that it's a short clip, but if you know what you're looking for, it's a demo of a lot of different systems going on, and it's really a lot to be excited about. I agree that the look of the Preleria stuff is it's nice. Like I, I would be happy playing that game. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not hugely into video game art, and you know, I when I look at when I'm playing a game, I'm not thinking. I'm not the guy that zooms in to the grass. It's like, whoa, look at how realistic the gla the grass is. No, I, the. <laughs> The movement animations looked really good. The transitions from walking to running. And uh, at one point, Eve, it does this little like catch up step. Uh, it kind of looks like it looks like that. It was uh, it was very it was very good. And uh, I wasn't the one controlling the character. But as I'm watching it, it kind of felt like I was the one playing the game to already and and that means that some of the real keys to any video game are already being nailed like you know i've heard it argued that the reason super mario brothers was the like most popular game uh, of, of all time is really just that they're they were the best at uh user control and movement response that they just figured out this little formula for the way that it felt when you moved that character with the, the little bit of slide when you turn around to go the other and all of those little pieces. And it appears from what I'm seeing from the movements in Chronicles of Valyria that they're doing a, a very good job of that. And that's what I, I want to get into the world and feel like I'm walking around the world, not get into the world and figure out how I press buttons to make sure things happen. And the video was a real positive. When there was debate or talk about, you know, graphic wise, like that would be, I know we talked about that. would be fun. like, I think most of us would be fine with that is just what we were actually playing. Um, Kind of what you just said is, you know, versus a real, more realistic art or look. Um, I would be fine with that, but the the vision of the game is pretty grand. So uh, the uh, the art uh, the art being left on the table, I think, in the end, would diminish it. Like we already have Dwarf Fortress. You know, if you just want cool. Uh, interesting features with no art at all. You could go play Dwarf Fortress. Uh, but I think that part of the vision for this game really is uh, making it look pretty. I, I'd be happy to just get in and mess around in Preleria, though. Yeah. And I, you know, you mentioned you're not the type to look at the grass and think, "How neat is that?" I, I have to assume most of the, uh, a large part of the people that do do that don't do it every time they log into the game. So, but um, I and, mean, I I take it with a grain of salt. I expect any plants are being done with speed tree these days. So, I know it's just you know movie magic with a, a plug in that the entire industry, the entire entertainment industry in general, all sectors uses. So, yeah, it's just how you use it that matters. Mm. Well, and we've, um, you know, to, to, to your point, Nero, talking about all the different systems, if you know what you're looking for, you know, we've 
kind of talked about it over the years. Of course, anyone that, that has known us for a while, we started with EverQuest Next. So they, they certainly released what appeared to be some gameplay at times. Um, but we, we sort of, after the fact, you know, heard or learned, I, I don't know how, how to put it, that, you know, those weren't actually, it wasn't really, a, a, it was a demo. It wasn't really a gameplay from a, you know, a playable game that they could log in and, and keep you know, go explore different aspects. That was just a demo. So to so to see this is, it, you know, it is very far along. I mean, all, all that they have working and, and doing um, is, is definitely a great sign. Yeah, in, in that video, if we take what we saw there and combine it, even just with some of the, the uh, gifts of combat, uh, you know, you can really see, like, as you see the character moving, how how it how it'll mesh well with melee uh, third person melee fighting games, and uh, uh, I think that that's all going to come together pretty well. Like, I I have some strong confidence about that part of the gameplay, uh, about that part of the game now, and up until this point. I don't know what I could have been, you know, confident about them succeeding at because we've had so little information. And you know, what did I say after at, during Searing Plague? I said, yeah, you know, they have to ace domain selection, right? That that was that's what I said. That like the that Searing Plague was a mess and clunky and awkward and hard to even figure out what the game was supposed to be and i, I said that i said you gotta ace uh, domain and settlement selection you know and, prove to me that you can actually make and, something and in between those two they gave us the uh the raiders of the lost loot box or whatever it was yeah Whoops! <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna do that one again. <laughs> uh, as somebody was saying, that they have more sparks than they could ever afford if they uh, if they were going to spend real money or something, something like nice. that. But, but um, well, the other thing, so now we're at domain selection and. You know, we didn't get it on time and it got delayed a week and then it got delayed another week. And now things are feeling a little better because we've been shown some things about it. What do you guys think of the overlays? Go ahead. Nora. You mean the uh, the thing we saw in the, the last shinies or maybe I'm missing something? In the shinies, and then uh, Snipe dropped a few extra overlays for like showing county generation and stuff like that oh. in the uh, in the domain selection por portion I feel of like, the Discord. I feel like the way it's designed, they give you enough information that if there's something very specific you're looking for, you can find it. But if there isn't really something specific you're looking for, and there's maybe just uh maybe it's a proximity more that you're concerned with it's it's able to give enough information to see a lot of that and you know even if it's at a higher level and we see the uh like the the duchy mask and then some of the smaller breakdowns of some of the features and stuff uh i think that's already enough that people can start thinking about at like the county level and um you know, even even more fine grained than that, approximately where they think they're going to want to start and what they're going to try to do there. Um, and I will go back to the same thing I've been reminding people this entire time. All of this is still just leading up to the start of Kingdoms of Valeria. We have no idea where and how things are going to go uh, from the beginning of that to the end of that and then the start of uh, Chronicles of Illyria proper so it's um, it's it's good that we have all of this information and I think during Kingdoms 
we'll actually get a better idea of what all of the stuff means in the world and where we actually might want to be and what we actually might want to be doing. Um, and then it's just a matter of kind of working with where you're at versus, you know, what you're looking for going from there. It should be kind of an interesting sort of thing. Uh, again, as I've said, times i'm not planning to deal with any local politics or anything like that i'm just going to be traveling so uh, where everything ends up actually settling means basically nothing to me i'm happy if it's chaotic in fact and things constantly move and shift and change that just makes my job more fun so we also got in Discord, what I thought was interesting and showing kind of where they're at, uh, a couple different versions of the uh, the county boundaries as they were generated to have, you know, somewhat equal amounts of resources with uh, and, and just showing some of the real funny shapes that popped up here and there. Uh, and uh, but then being able to see if, even within a day as different things are popping up like you know slightly better look you know improvements on it and i it as a result like after seeing these and seeing the iterations and seeing them moving forward and seeing the detail level drilling down uh it appears that they're they're getting to that point in the in the process where you know well you spend you know the first part you get 90 percent of the work done and then you get like you get you get five percent of the work done at the equal amount and then it slowly gets down to the end it feels like they're in that last little little sliver where they're really just you know hammering out the dents and uh, and getting it ready and I'm ready. To, I'm, I'm excited to see it. As for other things going on with Chronicles of Valeria, I, I don't know that I have a whole lot more to bring up topic-wise. Yeah, I, I, I hate Discord, so I'm never in there. So I, I'm kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I hate I, I hate it as a communication medium, but uh. Um, when, when you're looking for specific people, because it just so easily disappears into nothingness. But so, I, so I miss out on a lot of those conversations. Yeah. So in the meantime, since we, uh, since I was last on the show, I guess I could update where I've, uh, where I've landed. So I, uh, I had said that because I wanted to play Toresk and I wasn't really sure I was um, talking about maybe joining Ashland and playing with uh, playing with them but I realized that they do, they want to play up north they want uh, they wanted Rothy and uh, Naren and Broadfear they, they wanted to be on the opposite end of the world uh, to where I was thinking that I would like to play because um Toresque Market Town is uh, with a nice tavern is my that's my goal and uh, after what since the kingdoms have already been picked and the maps have already been picked I was finally able to figure out you know a group of people that I could start you know planning with and playing with so I'm I'm joining Riftwood uh, which is uh, the far south kingdom on NA West and, you know, waiting to see there might not be right now. There's uh, some stuff up in the air with duchy selections and county selections, but it's kind of interesting that there aren't real there aren't actually enough dukes to go around to in to pick all of the duchies. So uh 
at every level of selection from here on, there will be vacant spaces that will go back into the reverse auction later. So, uh, yeah, there are, there could be some some interesting changes if people open up their wallets at the last moment. But yeah, so far. Uh, I feel like I'm integrating all right into into Riftwood. There seems like a good group of people that want to play. Apart from ID, he's just him. <laughs> Got a personality over there. Yeah, uh, it just the uh, the only person in chat is also in the <laughs> in the kingdom. Uh, but. I think that it's what's interesting is about the gaps in the nobility and having not enough dukes and not enough counts and all of that is that there's a chance that as I'm picking a settlement as a mayor that I I could have an NPC NPC duke or an NPC count and I could just be kind of you know it makes things it makes the the idea of picking a settlement really being like on your own. You know, you'll you'll have to deal with the NPCs. You know, people come in and there there people will play games. The the king, I'm sure, will find a way to get players into those roles. But uh, and maybe even through Kingdoms of Illyria, something uh, something will happen there. But that like what you were saying, Nero, that there's some real chance that whatever I select is going to be very different by the time we get around to playing the game. I've just got to try to find a good, uh, good location. That's those just vacancies are what I think will make it f fun. You know, we, we had talked about, you know, the, 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 uh, what was it? The, the King that, had sort of abdicated the throne and going back up for sale. It just, it's, would, to me, it seems so much more interesting if at the very beginning you just sort of have a stream focused on what the hell happens to this game, you know, who's going to come get it? You know, that, that, that would be like a perfect way to break people into to, to what the game is about, the, 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 the way all of the nobility works. I understand money's money, but it's sort of a similar thing, like, you know, this idea of a reverse auction, but just why not leave some things open? Just just see what happens. Um, maybe you don't for a little while have a count. You get a king, finally appoints, appoints one, and you don't get along with that count. What happens next? So, <laughs> right, because uh, you didn't plan for that. Um, that would be much more interesting to me, but... I'm also someone's just waiting for everything that's been planned to fall apart within the first month. So. <laughs> well, I know that in in some of those circumstances, they're like dukes that are planning on placing in that uh, kind of broken kingdom, but then also in areas where they're – uh, they where groups know that there aren't enough dukes to fill up all of the duchies. There are counts that are already planning on picking in areas where there's no duke with the uh, the hope uh, on their own or with the blessing of the the king uh, with the intent of rising up to mm -hmm. rising up the ranks uh, and just hoping that nobody comes in and buys that out from under them. Uh, but I am unaware of the actual price tags for all of that stuff. I know that they said it won't go lower than half price and it's uh, than the package was. But I don't I don't remember what the original prices were. I know uh, King was 5K and a Duchy was 2,500. So if it's not going less than half of those, then, you know, still quite a bit to have to pay for something. Um, yeah. 
and then a county was a county package after the Kickstarter was a thousand. See, ten k, five k, one k, and thanks, sir. Three hundred. Yeah. So, ten k for a king, five k for a duke, one k for a count, three hundred for a mayor. So the lowest the least amount of money that you would have to spend for a county would be 500. And it's still, still not cheap for just the title. Right. That you could lose quickly, mm-hmm. very quickly. You will yeah. if you don't maintain it. That's my guess. Yeah, that, that's a lot for us, but I guess it would depend on how many open spots there are. You know, 10K, I'm, you know, you, you, I'm sure the studio could use that, but in the grand scheme of things, I just feel like you would get much more out of it investment-wise if you didn't resell that 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 king uh, or queen's position and just let people fight over it at the very beginning. I feel like you would make much more than 10K and just exposure and people getting interested and people seeing what the excitement's actually about. Um, well, once the game is out, though, it's really just sparks, right? So, yeah, but I, the cash shop goes away. Yes, I'm. I'm just thinking of you know what I don't know what last they have on their website as far as my amount raised, but you know, 10k just seems small in comparison. But you know, every, I guess every penny counts when you're a smaller studio. But um, I I just wonder who has been hoping for that title like who in the community is not already bought in at at that kind of level that is holding out for well you can't buy a kingdom but they're they're going to be duchess available so for uh $2500 i'm wondering how many people are have are waiting for this and thinking and really all they want is the ability to claim a duchy id says he's looking to get a count title at the sale um uh nightfinger says pretty sure caspian said a mayor in a low value low popularity our area would be around $75 at the lowest. Mm-hmm. All right. I, that's not that's not a bad price for being able to claim a settlement. I yeah. Think if it's a nice settlement. But settlements all, settlements also will have huge variety in their in their quality and size. So I don't know. Well, if you're looking to have more of like a, a sandbox and an MMO sort of thing, I would imagine the population of low um, popularity sort of area is a perfect place for it until it gets built up and people find it and start checking it out. It's kind of yours to run and to uh, build up and direct. So it's that's kind of an interesting way to play, actually. I could see somebody just doing that and not necessarily playing as like an isolation or trying to be a single player person in a, in a meow but the idea that you're doing something where you're not going to have a lot of resistance from the outside and you're just trying to you know get things running as optimally as possible for fun you know it's a coe sim city so if you're only spending money for a title then what you should do is pick the least desirable piece of land and then you will always have that title there you go. Maybe that's. What I don't I know. Be. I or at least a, as far away from where you know other people have picked, right? So they, like they say, they they don't expect people to be traveling more than thirty miles from their home in in a spark, right? So uh, on. A normal player, they don't expect to be going more than 30 miles away from their their home. And uh, I think it'll be uh, it'll be pretty interesting to see, you know, just how how remote you can get. Like 
how how untouched can you keep your yourself you know can you really be forgotten that and it looks like you might be able to there are like thousands of settlements i yeah. the scale is gigantic i i think it's possible that you have a settlement that no player ever missed other than yourself yeah i mean i i just think about driving around like you know you think of california as a fairly populated state but there's long stretches where it's just like dirt and you know if you didn't have uh any water and your car broke down you might be kind of screwed for a little while there's the, you know it's there's a lot of areas of dense population and then there's a lot of areas where there's just nothing you can't like start building there and call it a town because every inch of land in America is owned by, you know, the government or some entity or something. So it's, and that's kind of the same thing I've been thinking about a little bit with um, COE. I don't know about when we leave the continent, when things are going to be like, if there's going to be uh, conflicts with indigenous populations or if there's going to be truly, um, islands without any any people on them whatsoever that you'll be able to find islands or continents or whatever but the idea that that's kind of a little weird and confounding is that every ounce of land every inch of land every place is technically owned at least on some hierarchical level uh if not by a mayor then by a count if not by a count the duke if not by a duke then uh, a king so uh, everything is technically owned it's just where's the actual distribution going to be and then how much of that's going to be from the top down if you buy up a little mayor spot in podunk nowhere is is the king going to come down from on high and say look you're like 50 miles off the beaten path i'm going to pay to relocate you you just take everything you go 50 miles this way you'll be supplied you'll get resources we'll take care of you you'll still be mostly alone but at least you'll be along the way and you'll actually be able to you know get some support from us uh and then the idea of saying no actually i'm fine being a mayor here find someone else kick me out if you need to <laughs> like that's that's really interesting to me that you know land ownership and land rights and land management becomes just as interesting of an issue in a game like this as it is in real life because just like in real life there is no place that you can just set your you know set your stakes down and be like i own this now this is where i'm building my land it's like no no it's already owned sorry mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of interested now in the idea of of somewhere far away would i be able to survive just a little farm i mean your account so it's big farm <laughs> i've already said i'm gonna be a terrible count so i might as well pick something <laughs> yeah. where, there's, where there's no people yeah i i wonder if there are a lot of counties like you could have a real lonely county yeah I mean, we were talking about that earlier before we went live, just how, how complex, how big, how many settlements there are. This, what, what did you say just within, the, how many data points are just within a six, I forgot, like six foot plot of land, how much information is actually flowing in just this small, and then you extrapolate that to such a huge world, and you start to understand better why it's taking so long to get this right. And then, then reading that, that post from Snipe and this, I think he called it the butterfly effect, just how <laughs> one tiny change, you know, when you have, I don't know what, I would say hundreds or thousands of different variables. Yeah. It's just When you're tuning a giant switchboard of knobs and every teeny little minute change is, you know, vast changes, you know, mountains rising, you know, disappearing, whatever, like that's, that's nuts like that's <laughs> you want to know what it's like to play god it ain't easy it is hard to build a an entire 
entire population vanishes because you somehow ch adjusted this nitrogen content of the soil by a tiny amount. Just a little. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I think that post That's does definitely start to have, well, hopefully for most sane people anyways that read it, you start to understand why, you know, it, it takes so long to get it just right. Because this isn't, you know, we talked about, this isn't World of Warcraft where you have someone hand designing a fairly small landmass, you know, this is huge. Yes. Just, just thinking about all of it, just, just, you know, when we had the, the talked a lot about farming, just all of the different things that they are putting in one little area as it relates to farming. I mean, and then you think about the rest of the world, everything else that goes in on top of that, it's just nuts. Yeah. Because how, how big they say the file, you know, um, several terabytes, right? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it's. Because initially it's my monstrous. thought is, how is that so, you know, what in the world are you doing that it's so big? But then you see that post, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, that, that starts to make a whole lot more sense. <laughs> You're having to account for a millions and millions and millions of little things for us to be able to look on the Internet and pick a little area. Well, the world world has to be there before you can take a part of it, right? That's true. As we're sitting here, I I spilled water all over my keyboard, so <laughs> I'm gonna have to go take care of that. Okay. Yeah, and we we are at the end of the show too. Um, <laughs> so d depending on um, you know, we we obviously alternate shows for those who watch us regularly. So I, I guess tentatively, Ashes will be next uh, next Friday. That being said, I, I think we sort of have an agreement that if um, the time does come where there's, you know, we get into actual uh, settlement, you know, that, that will become more of a focus probably week by week. Uh, so certainly if something, I don't know that anything will change in the next week, but if, if for some reason it did, we will obviously announce kind of that we're going to switch what shows we do. So that being said, um, everyone have a great weekend and thanks for joining us. We'll see you in a week. Yeah. See you later, everybody. Have a good one.